Hey guys, today we're going to read and learn 14 advanced vocabulary words and phrases. This is an article from CNN.com. This article is about a study that shows how young people are at risk for hearing loss. The article is titled, Study Shows One Billion Young People Are at Risk for Hearing Loss. This is how to prevent it. Now let's go to the first part of the article. Try to read along with me so you can practice your pronunciation with a good, clear American pronunciation. Turning down the racket isn't just for disgruntled parents. A new study has shown it could protect more than one billion people at risk for hearing loss. When it comes to phones, music, movies, and shows, it's common for adolescents and young adults to listen too loud and too long. According to the study published Tuesday in the journal BMJ Global Health. Okay, now let's take a look at the phrase that we're going to learn today. The first that we're going to learn is this, turning down the racket. Let's take a look at the word turn down. Turn down is a phrasal verb. This means that you adjust a control on a device to reduce its sound or to lower its volume. Like for example, picture this. You're in your room listening to very noisy rock music and you're cranking up the volume to its maximum. Your mom is reading her book downstairs and she can't concentrate because of the loud noise. So she would say, Turn it down. I can't hear myself think with all that racket going on. Turning down in this context simply means that you are lowering the volume. Here's another example. So let's say you're throwing a party and you have loud music on. You're expecting guests and when they come over, you start talking but the music seems to be so loud you can't hear each other when you're talking. So you ask your family member, hey mom, can you please turn down the music a little bit? Which means, hey mom, can you lower the volume of the music so we can talk? And racket simply means noise. So for instance, I'm here like working and then all of a sudden I hear a loud noise downstairs. So I'm like, what's that racket? What is going on there? What is going on down there? So what is that racket means what's that loud noise? What is that noise? And the phrasal verb turn down also has another meaning. Turn something down is to reject something that was offered or proposed. Here's an example. Say there's like a family gathering and one of your relatives invited you to the party, but you were like not close to your relatives, so you just want to chill at home. But one of your cousins called you up and asked you if uh, you're going. So you reply, yeah, our aunt invited me to the party, but I had to turn down the invitation because I don't feel like going. So you refused the invitation. Here's another example to turn down a job offer. Let's say you were offered a job opportunity at this company, but the pay is actually pretty low. So you decided to turn down the job offer. The next word that we're going to learn today is disgruntled. Disgruntled. Pronounce that with me. Disgruntled. Disgruntled. Disgruntled is an adjective. It is a word to describe a person who is unhappy and annoyed. It comes from the word to grunt. Now let's take a look at that word again from the article. Turning down the racket isn't just for disgruntled parents. So parent here is the noun. So the adjective disgruntled is describing the noun, which is the parent. So the disgruntled parents. Now let's take a look at further examples of this. Let's say you're the supervisor, you're working for a company, and you're leading a team of people. So these people are not happy with their jobs because of low wages, probably poor working environment, and other reasons. And as the boss, you are concerned of their work performance. And you have to do something. And then you talk it over with the higher-ups and explain that maybe they should be compensated a little bit better. And maybe even give more benefits because you think 
The problem with disgruntled employees is that they could pose a risk for the company. Now let's read the next part of the article. We estimated that 0.67 to 1.35 billion individuals aged 12 to 34 years worldwide likely engage in unsafe listening practices and are therefore at risk for hearing loss, said lead study author Lauren Dillard via email. Dillard is a consultant to the World Health Organization and a postdoctoral fellow at the Medical University of South Carolina. Now, before we go to the vocabulary, I just wanted to teach you the pronunciation of this word. So this is a very common mispronounced word that I often keep hearing, and the word is email. Some people pronounce this as email, email, but the stress here is at the E sound, email, email. Okay, now you try. Okay, good, one more time, email. All right, awesome. The next word that we're going to learn is the word engage. Engage here is used as a verb, but it can also be used as an adjective, which we will take a look at later. To engage in something means to participate or to be involved in something. So here, it's actually pretty common to talk about this in social media. So here's an example. Content creators are learning how to make interesting videos by trying to level up their video editing skills and content research skills so that viewers can engage in their videos. As an adjective, you use this to describe something that is very attractive that you would like to participate or to be involved with. Here's an example. I love this content creator because he makes educational and highly engaging productivity videos. I can't stop watching his content. Okay, now let's read the next part of this article. Exposure to sound at too high a volume can fatigue the sensory cells and structures in the ear, Dillard said. If that goes on for too long, they can become permanently damaged, resulting in hearing loss tinnitus, or both. Researchers conducted a meta-analysis of scientific articles regarding unsafe listening practices published between the year 2000 and 2021 across three databases, the study said. Okay, word number four, fatigue. Can fatigue. Fatigue means tiredness or weakness, and it can be physically emotionally, or even mentally. So what else can fatigue a person physically? Staring at your phone for very long hours at very close eye proximity. This can cause eye strain. So you could say something like, staring at your phone for long hours can fatigue your eyes. Or if you're listening to very loud music, you can say, listening to loud music can fatigue your ears. Or if you're doing strenuous physical activities, for example, we could say, engaging in strenuous physical activities can fatigue your muscles. The next word we have, tinnitus, tinnitus. So this is not pronounced as tinnitus. This is pronounced tinnitus. So tinnitus is a healthcare vocabulary. In layman's terms, that means the ringing of the ears. So it's, for example, it's a symptom from the disease called TMJ, or it can also be caused by flying on an airplane. And we call that airplane tinnitus, airplane tinnitus, which is the ringing of the ears from ascent to descent of the airplane. So here's a further example. You should perform the Valsalva maneuver during ascent and descent of the plane by gently blowing your nose while pinching your nostrils and keeping your mouth closed. That will equalize the pressure between your ears. Okay, now on to the next part of the article. Let's read. The unsafe practices were tracked according to the use of headphones as well as attendance at entertainment venues, such as concerts, bars, and clubs. According to the study, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention limits safe noise levels at around 85 decibels over 40 hours a week. 
If you are listening for only two and a half hours over a day, that is the equivalent of about 92 decibels, the study said. And just in case you do not know what decibels is, so it is a unit to measure sound levels. So I found this example online. Let's read it. A whisper is about 30 decibels. Normal conversation is about 60 decibels. And a motorcycle engine running is about 95 decibels. Noise about 70 decibels over a prolonged period of time may start to damage your hearing. Loud noise above 120 decibels can cause immediate harm to your ears. And this is the symbol of decibel. And FYI, the instrument that measures sounds in decibels is this one. Okay, on to the next part of the article. Let's read together. Plugged into a smartphone downloaded with MP3 audio files, listeners often choose volumes as high as 105 decibels. And venues often range from 104 to 112 decibels, the study said. Fortunately, policies, businesses, and individuals can put measures into place to encourage safe listening and protect hearing from the damage over time, Dillard said. Okay, now the next word we're going to learn is a phrasal verb, plugged into. Plugged into is a phrasal verb, which means to connect to something. Okay, now let's use this in a context. So let's say you are at the airport and your phone is almost dead, say 2%. Luckily, the airport has a charging station. You see someone sitting next to it and then you ask them, excuse me, can you plug this in for me? Meaning, can you plug my charger into the outlet? Now let's go to the next part of the article. Let's read together. The analysis of the study was rigorous, and the evidence is compelling that hearing loss should be a public health priority, said Dewet Swanpole, a professor of audiology at the University of Pretoria in South Africa. Swanpole was not affiliated with the study. The next word we're going to learn is the adjective rigorous. Rigorous. Pronounce that with me. Rigorous. Rigorous means very strict. This word is often used in exercise and training. So here's an example. The team must go through weeks or even months of rigorous training to win the upcoming tournament. Here's another example. A year before filming Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot had to go through rigorous training and diet to be physically fit for the action movie. Here's another adjective. Compelling. Pronounce this with me. Compelling. Compelling. Compelling means convincing or persuasive. So here's an example. Let's say there's two businesses and they're not doing very well. So they, they made a compelling argument that it would be a good idea to merge the companies, which means they made a convincing argument that I think we can still save the business that way. And here's another word that connects with compelling, a compelling reason. For example, there is a compelling reason why we should replace our car every decade because old cars emit more carbon dioxide that's damaging to our environment. And here's another example. There is compelling evidence that sugar is bad for our health. So here we have two collocations a compelling reason, compelling evidence. So next we have the word affiliated with, affiliate. Let's pronounce that word together. Affiliated, yated, affiliated. Now you try. Okay, good. Affiliated means that you're associated with or connected to a particular group or an organization. Now, you don't necessarily work there, but you're kind of connected to it somehow. Here's an example for doctors. Dr. Smith is affiliated with three different hospitals. So here's an example. You're at work and there's a huge project, but you're not affiliated with that project. It's because you work in a different department. Although you work in the same company, but you're not associated with that project. Now let's go to the next part of the article. Let's read together. 
Whether listening on your own device or at a concert, Dillard cautioned that ringing ears is a good sign that the music was too loud. There are ways to prevent the damage before you notice the effects, however. Some devices allow people to monitor their listening levels in the device settings, she said. Some even will alert you when you've been listening too loud for too long. If your device says you're listening at unsafe levels, turn down the volume and listen to music for shorter periods of time, Dillard said via email. The next word we're going to learn is caution. Caution. Caution here is used as a verb, meaning to warn something. And this can be used as a fancy way of saying be careful. So here's an example. You should exercise caution when you're using an electric food processor. So this simply means to be careful when you're using a food processor. You might hurt your hand. You might hurt your finger. Caution can also be used as an adjective. Cautious. Cautious. Cautious, meaning to be careful. So here's an example. You should be cautious about what you post online because people may steal your personal information, which means you have to be careful when you're posting all your stuff online because people may steal your information. Now there's an idiom that's connected with the word caution. To throw caution to the wind. This means to do something without worrying about the risk. So you can use this to talk about something that you're about to do and decide to do it anyway without thinking of the negative implication. For example, I threw caution to the wind and jumped on the back of a wild horse. Now let's read the last paragraph. Read along with me. Expert cannot conclusively say which headphones are the safest for listening, Dillard said. But she did recommend using ones that reduce background noise which may help keep the volume at lower level since you don't need to drown out the noise around you. But you don't always have control of the volume dial. If you are at a loud concert or venue, you can protect your hearing by standing further away from speakers and taking breaks away from the noise, if possible, Dillard said. And it always helps to use some ear protection, even the foam earplugs will do, she asked. Now the next word we're going to learn is conclusive. Conclusive is an adjective. Pronounce it with me. Conclusive. Conclusive. Conclusive means something that is irrefutable, something that's convincing, without a doubt it is true because it's backed by evidence or proof. Now you can also use this as an adverb by adding the ly at the end of the word. Conclusively. Conclusively. I can conclusively say. So here's an example. I cannot conclusively say how much sugar is considered safe for our body, but try to limit your sugar intake just to be on the safe side. So here it's used as a negative. I cannot conclusively say. I'm not particularly sure because there's lack of evidence. Or... The next is a phrasal verb, drown out. Drown out. To drown out means the sound of something is covered by an even louder sound. So here's an example. So you're on your computer and you hear the sound of birds outside chirping. Then all of a sudden you hear a loud sound of the lawnmower. You look outside the window and you see, oh, your neighbor is mowing his lawn. You can still hear the little birds chirping, but it's drowned out by the noise of the lawnmower. So you can say, the lawnmower drowned out the sound of the birds. The last word that we're going to learn is venue. Venue. Venue is a noun. It is a place where something happens. For example, a concert, a meeting, or an event. So for example, your friend called you and then she tells you, oh, I'm getting married next month. And of course, you're happy for her. And then you, you ask her, have you chosen a venue for your wedding? And then she says, we chose the beach for a wedding venue. 
And that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me to learn some English today. And don't forget to connect with me on all my other social media accounts. I have my private Facebook group and my Instagram. And that is it for today. And I'll see you in the next one.